Protestantism is an easier target than orthodoxy because we don't have anything even like the prosperity gospel. And I know not every Protestant believes in that. I'm not saying they do. But orthodoxy is so weary of the idea of someone offering you money for anything because we have the lives of the saints, 2,000 years of saints that we read and venerate. One of the things that I found in my research into LGBTQ propaganda was that there are huge amounts of money that go into Protestant churches mm -hmm. from very top level organizations and especially yep. private millionaires and billionaires yep. in order to get the word out uh, for kind of this pro pro LGBTQ message. Yeah, I, th I believe 100 percent that there is uh, the demonic is involved in that. I do not believe for a second that this is all uh, done by accident. When I look no. at how much money is being spent through the church as being kind of a gateway to um, to this type of propaganda. But the most the most amount of it that I see being targeted is not to orthodoxy or even Catholicism, but specifically towards Protestant churches. Yeah. And I was wondering if you could speak on that and if you've done any research there and if, uh, you know, you can kind of walk us through that. Sure. I just discovered there's a comments tab here and people are going nuts for the metal conversation. So yeah. shout, shout out to everybody here. <laughs> um, I can give an answer for that. Um, I don't know how to answer it without throwing some shade at Protestants. So I apologize. No, I no, it's I okay. We have a, you well, know, try say to, your, say your well, thoughts. I, <laughs> Well, I actually did want to jump in there for a second. Andrew okay. said that before, and I do agree that it's Protestant churches that are being infected. But I I mean, we can say this, right? Uh, if you know who someone like James White is, right? And I then do. you put someone like Joel Osteen up, right? Mm. Both of these people would say, yes, I believe in Jesus Christ. But we know one is what? Using it for money. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is actually, yes, he's about God's word. He's about defending and proclaiming the truth. Correct? No, so, I can't. I can't. I can't agree with you that James White is correct in proclaiming God's word. You know, okay, I can't yep, this, is what, this is where we'll but what this is where rule. What I can heads. say, what I can say is this. The reason the reason I would debate him, I would debate him if you were focus on the Protestant church is because that's where I see the money going. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it has nothing to do with me talking about necessarily that the, there's not great spiritual leaders inside of Protestantism as, at all, but yeah. mostly just this is where I see them pouring all this money. Yeah. And there's so many different denominations. Um, so, you know, clearly there's some kind of agenda there. And the yeah. Protestant church must look like a big juicy steak to these people <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. And so, you know, so I was kind of, Sure. To, and yes, you're going to throw a little shade. That's okay. It's not I got to speak the truth in love. So, I got to speak yeah. the truth in love. <laughs> uh, your wife is saying she's a hardcore Megadeth fan. Uh, Dave Mustaine is actually a Christian. He, he's a, a Protestant, yeah. but he's he's stopped doing a lot of his old uh, songs. Just like Alice, uh, Alice Cooper won't play a lot of his old satanic songs. He's also a Christian now. So I would say that the reason that Protestants tend to have all this money thrown at them is because they're the ones that would accept it. Not all Protestants. I'm not. I'm not throwing an umbrella here, and I'm sure. not. I'm also not condemning all Protestants. I don't personally. People have asked me, "Do you think all Protestants are unsaved?" or blah blah blah. I I will never say who is saved or not saved. I'm not God. I can't see into anyone's heart, mind, or soul. It's God's decision who's saved and who's not. But there are also very differing degrees of this. Now, the Catholic Church is also very corrupted. Obviously, they've accepted tons of money from NGOs and world organizations to do. I mean, you've seen the clown masses and the Pachamama oh, yeah. worship that they're doing. And Pope Francis just suppressed the traditional Latin mass, which is half their converts were only there for the traditional Latin mass in the first place. So right. he's obviously, you know, bought and sold. But I would say that Protestantism is an easier target than orthodoxy because we don't have anything even like the prosperity gospel. And I know not every Protestant believes in that. I'm not saying they do. But orthodoxy is so weary of the idea of someone offering you money for anything because we have the lives of the saints, 2,000 years of saints that we read and venerate and ask for their intercession. We read books about them. We watch movies about them. And they're constantly talking about the virtues of asceticism and poverty and humility. Poverty because they're monks. They're not saying you should be, you know, raising your family on breadcrumbs or anything, but they're always talking about the temptation of money. And St. John Chrysostom has a whole book that I just read from in my video two nights ago about Kenneth Copeland, 
this book on wealth and poverty, which is a collection of his sermons on Lazarus and the rich man. Incredible book. I highly recommend this for everyone interested in the topic on wealth and poverty. It's from uh, the popular patristic series, St. Vladimir Seminary Press. So we have all these incredible saints warning us against money. And we see the way other Orthodox live. Sure, there are some rich Orthodox, but most people are, are relatively modest, I would say, in their lifestyle. Even if they have a lot of money, they're usually not flaunting it. So then you see someone like Joel Osteen or Kenneth Copeland or Joyce Meyer or T.D. Jakes. I mean, there's all these big influential Protestants that just absolutely love money. I'm not saying you do, Pedro. I'm not saying your church well, does. Well, there was well, that no. power couple. What was that power couple where the one was like uh, uh, having sex with like the pool boy and the other <laughs> oh, one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. You know which oh, one I'm talking about? That? I can't, do you remember which remember. ones those are, Pedro? No, but I, I remember that story. I, I, I don't, but I'll, I'll say this really quick. M Michael, me and you, we we have to talk because I feel like <laughs> I feel like you have a bad rap of Protestantism in your head because I, of well, people I who have committed yeah. to spiritual abuse. I think so, I think if you co if you were to sit down with somebody like a James White, or a Michael Brown and actually hear them oh, talk. Oh no! Oh they're, no! They're, they're, they're <laughs> like Michael Brown the same too? things you are. <laughs> no. Well, well, no. Well, no. I don't. Uh, well, this is what I would say about Michael Brown. I'm <sighs> not Armenian, right? Okay. But I wouldn't call him Armenian because he doesn't really talk like an Armenian. The reason why I fall in James White's camp is pretty much because of the sovereignty of God. Look, and I would debate Tota and Sola Scriptura. I would debate James White. Jay Dyer would debate James White. The problem with people like James White and Stephen Anderson is they make videos about how evil orthodoxy is, but they refuse to actually talk to us. No, 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 no. But th this is the other thing. I've actually seen a couple programs on James White when he talks about the orthodox, right? Mm. What he would do for you is what you would respect is he actually separates the actual Orthodox Church, which is what you come off as, and then the other Orthodox Church, right? That's actually about the money, about re what, at revising history. There's there no Orthodox Church that's about the money. There are schismatic groups and there are individuals within the church that are corrupt, of course. That's true everywhere. I would never say that we have a, a, yeah. a church of infallible, perfectly holy people. Of course not. There, there we go. No. If that's anyone, why I like them doesn't have that either, Pedro. Protestantism has plenty the entire prosperity gospel is based around gimme, 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 gimme. That's gimme. true. The whole it's word of faith but, movement is openly said. Yeah. Too. But if but if we know anything about where my camp stands, R.C. Sproul, James White, even who you talk against, Michael Brown, we reject the that gospel. You know that, right? Did you see my book review video of uh, Michael Brown's book, Christian Antisemitism? No, I haven't. I, I, I couldn't even make it. I couldn't make it through the book. I was expecting some, like, because I saw him debate with Dr. E. Michael Jones, and I can respect anyone who will debate or talk to E. Michael Jones because he's a, a hot property, so to speak. I really like the guy. I've given a lecture next to him. I've oh, had him I. on my channel. I like him too. Um, he's a very interesting character, both in person and, and on the internet. Um, so I, I wanted to respect Michael Brown. I was interested in his book, Christian Antisemitism, but every page is just quoting some church father and saying, oy vey, what an evil anti-Semite. Then he goes on to the next one. Does it like, there's no depth to it. There's no substance to it. Like it was I said, the only I, book on my channel. I've given a full thumbs down. Yeah. Right. Well, it's, I, I mean, and oh, it sounds, yeah. it sounds like we need, we need to set this up maybe for, for some other time for, for the, uh, for the verbal sparring. I would, uh, <laughs> yeah. I would I like know. to try, I would like to try to take it back. If okay. Could. Okay. Yeah. To the, um, yeah, I haven't the, answered the question. To yet. the demonic, and no, I like spicy Probably stuff. Don't get me wrong, I like the yeah. verbal sparring. You know what I mean? But I don't, I, I don't want you to feel like you're getting ambushed here. I'm, yeah, yeah. He, I yeah. Mean, he's probably feeling a little bit ambushed. Okay. No, 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 I'll, no, not at all, not at all. Okay. You're a friend, Michael. Trust me. Okay, I appreciate I, that. You too, I know you how too. to control myself to say yes. Thank there you. are people who are not Calvinists, who are not, you know, Reformed the theologians that are saved and actually do know God's word pretty well. I've met those people. My so. dad, my dad taught me from a young age to stay away from all of the what we would consider degeneracy. And I'm sure you understand exactly what I'm talking about. The reason that I moved over to orthodoxy specifically is because I can't find places within the Protestant churches anymore, almost anywhere hmm. that haven't folded in some way to it. Yeah. And when I researched out orthodoxy, they've kind of stood as a shield, yeah. like this kind of steadfast multi thousand year shield yeah. against this. And um, when I look at Abrahamic religions in general, generally, most of them are pretty much, you know, against this type of thing. 
but orthodoxy has really been persecuted for it yeah. in a huge, huge way that I haven't seen in the Protestant churches that I haven't really seen in the Catholic church even. Really, Orthodox church seems to get singled out uh, for kind of its steadfast views here. And uh, I would say that that in and of itself is very good evidence that it's something that's worth really looking into and really looking at if it's going to be the last shield on planet Earth from uh, from this type of invasiveness, yeah. then I, I think it's probably the, uh, the the right path to take. Do you yeah. what, what are kind of your thoughts there on that? Can I answer the question about what with the money and the Protestants? Because I kind of. Sure. Sure. I kind of, you know, we spent like 10 minutes that are sparring about it, but yeah, I, I, I want to get my actual, because I'm trying to speaking the truth in love is like such a hard thing to do sometimes. Right. So I have my prayer rope that I'm playing with through all my videos. So Protestantism as a movement, not to speak against any individual, is based on the rejection of authority, specifically the rejection of the authority of the hierarchs, the priests, the bishop, etc., which for the Orthodox is of supreme importance, this obedience to our, our clergy, as long as they're not commanding us to sin or forbidding us from virtue, of course. So Protestantism for, to me is like a spiritual democracy where everyone's voice is equally valid, right? Everyone's interpretation of the Bible is equally valid to others, even though they'll all disagree with each other on that one. And St. Justin Popovich put this in a really interesting way. He said, Protestants rejected the Pope so they could each be their own Pope instead. So we have a problem of authority here where who has the correct interpretation of the Bible? Who, who has the correct canon of the Bible? Because all these things are related, right? And each Protestant that I've encountered will claim sola scriptura, even though I don't think they actually believe in that, if you play it out you know, fully to its logical end. But when, when they say sola scriptura, they mean just the parts of the Bible that I like and my interpretation of those parts. I'm not trying to insult you, Pedro, or any Protestants listening. I'm calm. But You're good. Really, okay, good. But that's really what it boils down to. Sola scriptura means sola the parts that I like and sola my interpretation of those parts. <laughs> well, if you don't have 2,000-year history of this church going back to the day of Pentecost, which is when the Orthodox Church was planted, that is our authority— you know, we can point to something. If someone says, hey, we'll give you a billion dollars to promote Zionism, we can say, thank you for the offer. Let me check what the church father said. Uh, nope, I'll turn it down. Thank you. Whereas someone else could say, well, according to Sola, my interpretation of the Sola, the verses I like, that sounds perfectly fine. It says, bless Israel. You'll be blessed. Sure. Give me the money. 